Well, if you thought I was kidding about the car needing tires, I wasn't. They're pretty worn through all the way around. Right about time, huh? Uneven wear, so what we'll do is we'll make sure that the pins are greased properly. There's no rust at all. Yeah, that is very good. Look how clean this thing is. Yeah, rolling fender is definitely not our specialty. I was a B-series master. I'm a K-series master. I might as well be an F-series master at this point, you know? <laughs> it's a one-stop shop over here. To start with a compressor, dryer, condenser, flush aligned, our expansion valve, maybe evaporator. Hey, what happened to the rim, John? Um, Jaime did that to my car when he, uh, he, he drove it. What do you think about that, Jaime? No regrets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. What's going on everybody? Mike here, AX Garage. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to part two of the prep for the classic Honda on the Dragon. And today we have here a 98 Integra Type R and we've got a few things we have to do today and John's going to tell you guys a little bit more about it. All right, so we have our buddy Francisco's car and he's going to be making his first trip up to the tail of the Dragon and attending this awesome meet that we've been going to. This will be our fourth year. And so the car alone is pretty cool, pretty stock with some, you know, OEM plus type mods on it. 98 Integra Type R with about 103,000 miles on it. Um, he's been cleaning the car up. He imported this car himself. So it came a lot like it is. Uh, he put a new valve cover on it and you can see it's got a new radiator on it. A basic kind of intake on it. These are really special Mugen 4 to 1 headers. Has a Mugen... Uh, twin loop exhaust on it as well um he i don't know what suspension on here what's on tain some tain um mon, or i think the street flexes on it and you know pretty pretty stock but the whole thing is is bought the car he's been doing the maintenance to it did the clutch did the timing belt did belts and he also just recently he's been going through the suspension the rack was really loose he had all new internals done in the rack and suspension components such as lower control arms bushings. Now, one of the other things is, as you can see, these were the tires that were in the front. Yeah, racing slicks. So what we're gonna be doing today is we're gonna be going through the brake system. We're gonna be replacing the stock brake lines with some steel braided lines. We're gonna put some new brake pads on here, cut the rotors and flush the fluid out to some Motul fluid. And we're also gonna put some new tires on it and do an alignment. This is a pretty good setup, I think. What really fixes the stuff that you run into a problem with driving in the mountains pretty hard. You don't want your brakes to boil and you need good rubber. So let's pull it apart and start getting everything done. Well, if you thought I was kidding about the car needing tires, I wasn't. They're pretty worn through all the way around, so definitely had some alignment issues up front but we're going to go ahead and get these tires off the wheels off the car and put some new tires on same thing falcon to xena 615 and uh, we should be good to go after that
All right, so here we have a fresh set of one of these 215, 45, 16, the uh, stock size for these wheels. Um, the new Falcon um, 615KRT, they're great. Everyone knows them, we love them, and these are gonna be awesome for the car. So let's lube them up and get them on the car. All right, so the tires are mounted and balanced. Now we're gonna move on to the brakes. So the brakes are all stock here, stock pads, uh, stock rotors. Rotors still have good meat on them, we measured them. So we're gonna go ahead and just resurface these right now. We're gonna fit some Hawk 5.0 HPSs on here, and we're gonna throw some good ridge steel brake lines and change the brake fluid. So first thing we're gonna do is pull the calipers, pull the brackets, and pull the rotors off. Mike did me a favor and already got these screws out because they were in there pretty good and a little corroded. So let's go ahead and start ripping her down. Right about time, huh? Uneven wear, so what we'll do is we'll make sure that the pins are greased properly and uh, see what's going on with that because that's significantly uneven, we're almost by 50%. about that. Do a fast. I think it's going to need more than that. So we're going to take three thousandths off it right now. We'll do a fast cut, then we'll come through and take whatever else we need with a slow cut. All right, so now we're getting the front rotors on here. These ones you can see that we got some deep grooves on it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and shave these down, give us some um, nice surface. And like I said, these are just within the spec. This will be the last brake job on these rotors before they gotta get replaced.
Now we'll crank it into two thousandths and do a slow cut. Beautiful finish. This one's ready too. We got one more to do and everything goes on the car in time for some brake lines. All right, so we are getting ready to install the new Hawk 5.0 HPS pads. And it turns out that they are for a regular model, like a GSR or an LS, which are significantly smaller, so they're not gonna fit. So for right now, since we're trying to get the car out for the evening, we're gonna throw the old pads in there and then get some new ones and swap those out. This is how it works. Sometimes your parts come wrong. If you guys are working on your car, you know, it happens to you too. It happens to us just the same. So we're not going to skip a beat. We'll keep on going and we're going to put everything back together. And then all we got to do is swap the pads whenever they show up. Let's keep going. Hey John, do you have the right brake line? Well, the good thing is between Type R and the standard Integras, they all work. So as long as we got them for one of the two, I don't think we can screw this one up. All right, so here's the stock brake line right here. And the good thing is, is our replacements go in the same locations with the same brackets. So this is perfect setup, Goodridge. We love these things. And the fluid, the fluid works. Fluid in that group. No, not there. We gotta get that bracket off. All right, so it's time to get this old fluid out of here, and we're gonna put some 660 Motul, some of the best brake fluid on the market. Well, I, I said it's because what I use. So we're gonna suck out what's left in the reservoir, and then we're gonna go ahead and start flushing the system out. All right, so uh, once again, you see it here all the time. We're gonna use our all-star brake bleeder with a check valve in it, the one-man bleeding solution. Oh, I'm getting a bunch of air out of this thing too.
All right, so we have all the brake fluid flushed. We have the rotors cut, brake lines in. The only thing we have to do is come back around and you probably won't be on camera for that and put the new brake pads in once we get the right one. So let's mount the wheels and do the alignment. So one other thing we have here is a set of brand new center caps. Very good looking. Hey, you make sure you line up right. Always line it up with your valve stem. All right, so we got the car up here. Our cambers are perfect to within spec. What we're comfortable with, we just got to address the rear toe and the front toe. This thing should go pretty quick. Yeah, look how clean this car is underneath, man. There's no rust at all. Yeah, that is very good. Look how clean this thing is. Yeah, I just, I just invested in these because my Maco one started breaking but they have to be double offset. This makes a big difference. Mostly for the motor mounts when I'm doing uh, the V6 motor mounts. All right, so here we have our second car that we're prepping for this video. This is a 2000 Honda S2000 Silverstone Metallic, about 79,000 miles, makes this an AP1 S2000. Uh, it does have some really cool stuff on there. Got Jace Racing, really big BBK up in the front. Got a Mugen uh, carbon fiber uh, hardtop there. Got the factory kit, see back there and also in the front lip, along with a few other things. Now, we got a few things to touch on. This S2000, we got a little bit of oil leaks from the valve cover. We got an air conditioning issues. Also, we have to, just the right height, possibly roll the fender. Now, before these wheels were put on, now these wheels are just temporarily, and it has some really aggressive T37 on there. I think they were like 17 by nine and a half with a plus 22 and uh, the owner wasn't paying attention on the turn and actually baconed uh, both of the front fenders. So we are going to try to make it better because uh, we don't have time to fix it at the moment. But I think we can, uh, with TJ's help, I think we can probably roll it back in a little bit because the fenders already roll. But uh, yeah, we got quite a bit to finish up here. So let's start up with getting the car up take the wheels off, that's just the height, and then uh, let's take a look at the fenders. So now with the wheels off, we can take a better look at our braking system up in the front here and also our suspension. It does look like we have a set of HKS coilover, heart race front sway bar, and a sick piston Jace Racing caliper up in the front along with a two-piece brake rotors. Now, in the back here, it does look like we have the stock caliper, but it does have uh, Jace Racing two-piece brake roller in the back. So uh, let's go ahead and um, what do you think? Adjust the height first? I say we fix the fenders. <laughs> yeah, well. Let me show you guys real quick. Look how bad that is right there. Yep, 
Yeah, rolling fender, definitely not our specialty, but, um, you know, Tia definitely got uh, some experience under his belt with his uh, <laughs> fender roller here. Not bad with this Eastwood tool. Hmm. What do you say, T? I say that, you know, I was a B series master. I'm a K series master. I might as well be an F series master at this point, you know? <laughs> it's a one stop shop over here. <laughs> so we used the fender roller and we were able to bend this lip that was bent out. We were able to get it back in and roll this thing back up to, um, to where it was. The only problem is we still have this little dent right here in this space. And uh, what we're gonna do is have the, the PDR paintless tent removal guy come and he'll be able to use his tools and kind of just straighten this back out so it's more flat like it should be. And then uh, it should look a lot better than it is. You telling me you can't fix that? Well, you know, I left my PDR tools at home, so, <laughs> you know. I mean, a type S Terry can do it all, but you know, without the tools, you can't do it all. Okay, so next up, we'll go ahead and uh, adjust our ride height. We're gonna go up about quarter inch up. TJ just marked the sleeve here, so we kind of have an idea uh, how many turns that uh, we'll be doing here. We'll probably do about three turns. What do you think, TJ? Three turns just about right? Um, yeah, let's start with three. So there's one right there. Let's just see what three gets us, I guess. That's two. So now we're going to move on to the driver front. Now we move on to the rear because the rear we don't really have much weight in the back, so we're going to go ahead and uh, give it maybe four turns or five. You know, every time we do the rear, we always say, you know, four or three, and then we figure out ended up needing like five or six. So I said we just let's go for for five and see what happens. It's two. Get a bird here. She looks good. Yeah. Yeah. And now we got the height dialed in. Next up, let's go ahead and lock down the coil of our sleeve and go ahead and torque down the wheels. Okay, so we got a suspension, wheels and tires, along with a fender out of the way. Next up, we're gonna work under the hood. TJ removing the battery because we have to replace the AC expansion valve. Now along with that, we also have the valve cover gasket and spark plug seal. So here's the expansion valve we just took out of the vehicle and uh, let's take a closer look. I'm not sure you guys can see it, 
but this valve is completely clogged. It's got all kinds of stuff inside here. I'm not sure what this is. I I can get this out. Let's take a look right here. Oh my god, that's free spinning. Yeah. Well, you know what it looks like? Nope. No compression. <laughs> compression probably bad. Yeah. Probably came apart and contaminated the entire system. So we're gonna need to start with a compressor, dryer, condenser, flush aligned, our expansion valve, maybe evaporator. Fingers crossed, no, we don't need to. <laughs> Well guys, the good thing is up in the mountains, the weather will be nice and cool. So we probably not gonna even need the AC. So we're still gonna be able to get our S2000 ready for the trip. So let's go ahead and put on the expansion valve in the meantime and uh, keep on moving. And now we got a valve cover out of the way. So let's take a look at the cylinder head. This motor looks nice and clean. 79,000 miles. That's really clean for 79,000 miles, to be honest. I uh, guess next up, let's go ahead and uh, finish up the valve cover here. Yeah, then I can become a full F Series master. So, OEM factory valve cover gasket set here. Can't beat OEM. Okay, all right. Everything's back together. <laughs> One last thing, four wheel alignment. So here's the reading for the rear. We got negative 2.6 camber on the driver's side and negative 2.7 toes way out. Uh, we probably gonna leave the camera the way it is just because how aggressive these wheels are. And uh, with that being said, TJ is doing his adjustment in the rear. Got the driver's side pretty much right in the center. We got just the passenger side and then we'll move on to the front here. T 
TJ is setting the steering wheel here. Make sure nice and center. Now all we have to do is just the front toe. Okay, there you go. I think we're all good to go on this S2000 here, minus the AC. She's looking good too. All right, so we just finished the S2000. That was a little bit of a headache, but it's all squared away for the trip. Now we have our buddy Grant's car. Um, we had this on a previous video where we were at the dyno. We did some modifications to it, increasing the horsepower and changing a few things up. The last thing left on this is just a quick alignment. Then we have some maintenance to do on my MDX, which is gonna be trailering the NSX, and we're ready for the trip. We are five days out and um, then we're getting ready to start this trip. So let's get this one knocked out and we only got one more. Old boy. All right, so we got our rear toe into spec. We're not gonna worry about the camber. We got our toe into spec in the back. Now we're gonna move forward and set our toes up front. And then this thing's done. Like I said, we're not worrying about camber. The numbers aren't what matter in this car. It's the clearance and the way the car performs. We just gotta get the toes back lined up again. So let's go ahead and do that. got all of our toes back into spec. Like I said, we're good with the cambers. The car is also completely loaded with a probably about 300 pounds worth of tools and equipment for the trip. And since most of the driving is gonna be done with that weight in the car, we wanted to make sure that the suspension was dialed in so we get good tire wear and everything because we will end up doing close to 25 to 2,800 miles on this week of driving. So this one's done, let's get my MDX in here and that's just regular service that we do every day here at the dealership. And we're ready for the tail of the dragon. This is the easy and most uninteresting car that's gonna be going on this trip, but it's also gonna be the most comfortable one. And that'll be my 2024 MDX A-Spec all wheel drive, white with black interior. And uh, while everyone's in their old cars uncomfortable, I'll have my Apple CarPlay heated and cooled seats going and my lane keep assist and all that good stuff while I'm towing the NSX up to the mountain. I'm not mad about that. And um, I know it's cheating, but this year that's how it's going to go down. But all we got to do is some regular maintenance, which is honestly, it's first oil change. And then um, she'll be good to go for the trip. Other good thing about this is uh, it doesn't wear the tires crazy in the front like the front wheel drives because you cannot spin the tires to save your life on this Why car. is that? Because it's all wheel squeal, super handling all wheel drive, torque vectoring, planetary gear specialist, yeah. Hey, what happened to the rim, John? Um, Jaime did that to my car when he, uh, he, he drove it. What do you think about that, Jaime? No regrets. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank you. All right, so recommended pressure on this is around 33, 34. Um, for the highway driving and the cold weather we're going into, I'm gonna jack it up to 40. It gives you a little rougher ride, but I'm also gonna be towing back here, so I wanna make sure everything is good for the weather that we're gonna run into. 
That and uh, you get a little better highway mileage with more air pressure in the tires. Um, so that's about that. I do have these really cool Acura accessory Ace Pick valve caps, horsepower. All right. 30 weights, 40 weights, John? 20 weight, baby. I like it thin. Getting it ready for race wars. 5.8. It's 5.7, but I put a little extra in just for insurance. For VTEC. That's because Mike's going to be driving this car in the mountains, and that scares me. All right, so that wraps up this Dragon Prep video. That being said, in the time we started filming this video, right up into now, which we are about five days out from actually leaving on the trip, we had this horrible storm hit the North Carolina and South Florida region, even all through Georgia. Now, that's put a lot of stress on a lot of people, and I really hope people are helping when they can. We're going to do our part by bringing some business up into the area, but we're also staying away from the heavily hit areas. That being said, we're still, this entire Classic Honda is on the Dragon event is still on. Everything still looks good. We've wrapped up all of our cars for the trip, and we're going to be heading up there right away. And this video should be coming out as the event is happening. Our following video will be a complete rundown of our trip. Our trip is a little different. Um, me and some of the guys go up first, and then Mike comes up a little bit later. But we compile everything together and show you guys what this entire event is about and what we're doing up there. Hopefully, we are going to be in an area where things aren't too damaged from this storm. And hopefully, there's no more weather that comes with it. But definitely an awesome event. You guys are going to love what we're doing up here, and you're definitely going to love our next video. So make sure you like, comment, subscribe, tell us what you guys think. I know I brought the nicest car out in this video for Dragon Prep, so you guys don't be jealous about it. Um, and make sure you guys enjoy and watch everything we have. That's all for this week. Check us out next one.